Good morning. Good morning. I'm Mother Gail Trailer, and this is Just In Case. God bless you this morning. Glad to see you. Hope you are well. Hope you enjoyed a beautiful evening. I did. It wasn't too hot. wasn't too cold. I just sat outside on the on the porch and and looked at um, this animal planet thing about the many uh, animals that live in the mountains. I, I, I saw the beauty of the bears and how they, um, uh, during the springtime, they, they came down from their snowy peaks and they, they began to scratch themselves against the tree bark to rid themselves of their um, excess hair, excessive hairs because they grow a new coat of hair every year. Big giant bears, they, they scratch on the tree barks. And I'm telling you, honey, they have a time relieving that itch too. I saw the eagles um, looking for food. Uh, it's the uh, biggest and the bestest that uh, will get that, you know, that carcass. You can't be weak to survive on the mountains. I saw the something, Ibu. They're like deer, but they climb mountainous rocks with little cliffs on the side. And they. Their feet are, are better than any sneaker anybody has ever made because they hold on to those, you know, that that, that, that hoof is, is like rubber. And they climb high and they're uh, defenseless, actually. And they have to come down because they all need uh, the food on the uh, lower uh, land there. And uh, very little is grown on the top. Very little vegetation, very little food is up there. So they come down and the Ibu and his mama and there's lots of them and they they have this instinct that uh, when they see a fox or any kind of other dangerous animal come toward them, they will split up and climb and jump and and confuse the enemy. They work together. They work together side by side. And that is the title of this little presentation today. Side by side. I saw the snow leopard. There's not too many of them left. Side by side. They're an animal that uh, they're, they're very protective, protective of their uh, young, and uh, the mother, when it becomes the mating season, she'll take her young with her, and uh, she'll go high and climb up and, and call to any male in the area to come, come on, let's, let's have a child, let's do something, I'm in heat, I'm ready. And it uh, shows how they were, um, they're not a side-by-side -side animal except to produce. The woman will fight the men. The men fight each other. They're, they're a nervous lot. Nervous. And they live on the mountain. Then there's the spider monkey. Oh, I had a good time last night. I just... It was, it was awe-inspiring how they work together, side by side, some of them, some of them, to protect one another. In the book of Nehemiah, we're going to read the third chapter, the first through the twelfth verse, and I'm going to use 
the uh, NIV study Bible to read from because the King James is a little bit difficult to pronounce the words, uh, the names. It's the names that, uh, but I'm going to attack it anyway. Before I read the word, I'm going to pray. And uh, if you would like to pray along with me, please. Prayer changes things and it helps. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask your forgiveness for all unrighteousness. Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest all things. You know, Lord Jesus, how we too run out of love for one another and sometimes it's hard to work together. You know, Lord Jesus, the intents of our hearts. But Father God, you are able and you are strong and mighty and you live within us and we can meet at your feet to get the job done and to do as you would have us to do and that's love one another. Thank you for this word this morning. Because we'll take this word with us all day long. And we will try to emulate. Be an example. Be an epistle. Of the word of God. Throughout this day. Thank you Father God. In Jesus name. Amen. Well Nehemiah uh, chapter 1. No. It is Nehemiah chapter 3, 1 to 12. It says, uh, as their focal verse, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Now, that's so easy to understand to some of us. It's easier to have more than one person working on a project. Uh, and I'm going to uh, vacation Bible school this week, and oh my goodness, I'll tell you about that afterwards. Nehemiah, third chapter, first verse through the twelfth. And uh, if you would care to look along in your Bible, uh, do so. I'm going to start reading, and um, perhaps. It'll become a little easier for me to announce, pronounce these, these names. Builders of the Wall. i give you a little history. Um, Jerusalem was just about, they had returned from the exiles. They were captured and they were returning to the city of Jerusalem, which had been uh, destroyed and and uh, uh, just everything was was stolen from it, and and the Israel army defeated and captured, and and their children were taken captive, and um, Jerusalem was now coming back into order, and they were becoming a people again, united for the living God whom they knew to serve. Um, this was the new Jerusalem. The old one had been uh, destroyed and just, just chaotically uh, pilfered. All of the fine gold and temples were ravished. And their uh, their idea was to protect this city because they still had enemies. They still continued to be bombarded by enemies. Uh, you name it. The, the Jebusites, the Canaanites, the, the Hittites, they were still out there. And they knew it. So they're building this new wall. Uh, 
and the temple of worship was being restored as well right in the old site they didn't move it down the street up the block up higher down lower on the same site they rebuilt the temple and these are the people that took part in the rebuilding of the temple at that time uh, Nehemiah was the priest he was the high priest and he had fellow priests working alongside would you believe some of their own people would jeer at them and and protest building that wall and 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 they picked at them for trying to build a wall to protect their city well let's read about the building of the wall Eliashib the high priest and his fellow priests went to work and rebuild the sheep gate Nehemiah I'm sorry Nehemiah was the cupbearer to the king duh had to, the computer does start rolling after a while. Nehemiah, the cupbearer to the king. If the king uh, uh, tasted anything, the uh, cupbearer was to taste it first because back then they would put poison in the food. They, this this king was like the others. Somebody was always vying for his position. And Nehemiah was really, he was a, a, a religious man who was upset at the temple and the wall of his city. He loved his people. And he requested uh, that the king would allow him to restore the uh, temple and to restore order by setting up a wall. Okay. So Nehemiah prays and he goes forth. First he inspects the walls. Then he goes forth. And uh, Eliashib the high priest and his fellow priests went to work and rebuilt the sheep gate. There's a sheep gate. Must be where the sheep went out and grazed and came back in. They repaired it. They dedicated it and set its doors in place, building as far as the Tower of Hundred, of the Hundred, which they dedicated as far as the Tower of Hananiah. The men of Jericho built the adjoining section, and Zakur, son of Emery, built next to them. The fish gate was rebuilt by the sons of Hassanah. They laid its beams and put its doors and bolts and bars in place. Merimoth, son of Uriah, son of Hecos, repaired the next section. Next to him, Meshulam, son of Berechiah, son of Meshzabel, made repairs. And next to him, Zadok, son of Bena, also made repairs. The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa. But their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. It's always somebody. Jeshana, the Jeshana Gate, was repaired by Jehoida, son of Pesaia, and Meshulam, son of Besadiah. They laid its beams and put its doors and bolts and bars in place next to them. Repairs were made by men from Gibeon and Mizpah, Melatia, Gibeon, Jaden, Maranoth, places under the authority of the governor of Trans-Euphrates. Uziel, son of Harhiah, one of the goldsmiths, repaired the next section. Hananiah, one of the perfume makers, made repairs next to that. They restored Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. Um, 
Rephiah, son of Hur, ruler of a half district of Jerusalem, repaired the next section. Adjoining this, Jediah, son of Haruf, Harumath, made repairs opposite his house. And Hatish, son of Hahashbania, made repairs next to him. Elkijah, son of Haram, Hashub, son of Pehath Moab, repaired another section and the tower of the ovens. Shalem, son of Helosh Hesh, ruler of a half district of Jerusalem, repaired the next section with the help of his daughters. It seems kind of boring to uh, hear all that they were doing. However, it never mentions the fact of how much someone did or exactly what they were able to do, but the people worked together. There were perfume makers helping as well as goldsmiths, and these people lived in nearby towns. Um, some came to give, and others gave a hand. Um, they made repairs opposite their houses and even mentions that Shalem's daughters worked right alongside of the men and repaired two sections just like the men of Tekoa. There are a lot of things that stand out from this chapter. They all work together for a common goal, and that was to build this wall to protect the city of Jerusalem, the holy city. They were commended for their part of the work, not for how much they did, but that they did it. Today, I, I'm seeing people work together to help children and adults all over Chattanooga. Where I see most uh, eager hands are at Olivet and at Tiftonia Baptist Church. There are teachers, principals, uh, children, men, women of every uh, uh, skill digging in to encourage and push the word forward. Um, I, I, I have, was in a uh, Tiftone, not Tiftonies, but all of its last um, vacation Bible school. And uh, I, I, I was always a student, but this last year and this year, I am an assistant teacher, which I am enjoying. I have teenagers. And why did God put me with teenagers? I thought there would be a, a problem, but I am truly enjoying my class. I see where I fit in, not how much I'm doing, not how much they are doing, but that we are all together learning how to better follow the leader. That's our theme. I see more and more parents and more and more uh, of every age group in this uh, vacation Bible school than ever. I've seen the growth of the little ones that I had last year. Everybody is growing up a little bit more, a little taller. and. It is something to behold. It is something to behold. How they are all working side by side to lift the name of Jesus higher 
and to walk this walk. Learn how to walk this walk a little better. Um, you don't always, you don't learn all this at once. This wall in Jerusalem was not built all at once. Everyone did their part. Everyone together, side by side. It makes the work easier. It makes the God's commission his great commission easier just not putting all the work on the pastor we are learning and sharing so that we can share with others uh, the teenagers are noting that they too are uh, want to be leaders and some of them feel they are leaders and uh, the older the the teachers are learning to listen and to ask them questions and together we are enjoying the task at hand. Mr. Uh, her name is Keela. Uh, yeah, we remember her. Keela Ochoa writes, let us work side by side to do our part whether big or small, to create a community of love where people can find Jesus. That's our work. That's the task at hand. And we can do it by God's grace, by His strength, and by His power. Keela writes a prayer. She says, Dear Lord, help me to work with others, side by side, by showing love and pointing others to Jesus. That's our task. That's the task at hand. Won't you help me? Won't you help lift the name of Jesus uh, where you are today on your job? If you're um, outside in the neighborhood, if you are in the supermarket, Remember, we, ha we are the body of Christ, and they will not see the word of God in anything else. If they don't have Bibles, most of them don't read them, but we are a living epistle, and it is our job to exhibit Christ's love in a dying world. I am just passing through. God bless you, just in case.